Ladies and gentlemen, hi, I make chess YouTube videos, but many of you knew that already because you're returning viewers to my channel. Welcome back. And some of you are watching for the first time. Welcome. I usually sit right in this chair and some others in the past because I've lived in different locations and I talk about chess right here on this screen, but sometimes I leave the house. Contrary to popular belief, I do in fact have legs and feet. You just really don't get to see them until today. You see, a couple of weeks ago, there was TwitchCon Paris, and I was in Paris with my wife Lucy, but not for TwitchCon, and there was a chess meetup at the Hardin de Luxembourg, which was probably terrible French, and I snuck in to the chess meetup and challenged a couple of people, and in today's video, I'm going to show you a game that I played with the black pieces against none other than Nemo, who is a chess and other variety content streamer, and in this video, I did something really awesome. I'm gonna show you the footage first, and then we're gonna analyze the game. I sacrificed the rook in real life. Here we go. Okay, are you getting your game plan ready? Yeah. When's the last time you played over the I board? I know the first move. Okay, good luck. It's gonna be E4. I, it's, I knew, all right. It's um, gotta, gotta be the vintage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. your first one's gonna be C6, right? It has, has, has to be vintage. Yeah, this gives me- Are, you, are we live? Is yeah, we are. Is it a Twitch stream? Yeah, it is. Shout out to Chupalza. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Nope. Okay. What's the secret prep now? It's been a couple of years since we last oh, played. Oh, I strained my neck. How does Hikaru do that? Oh my god. <laughs> Ow. Okay. What is, oh, like. No, no, no. Yeah, that's what I'm. He's Dubai. He almost hit my camera because he did this. Oh, damn. Level 1 is so chill. Level 1 Hilarious, actually. Um, okay. <laughs> so I'm guessing you know all the theory here. Shadoop. <laughs> um. Aggressive Shadoop. I'm going to say this on camera. Yeah. Paris is better than New York. I'm saying it right now. Oh, yeah. You've enjoyed your trip here? Yeah, it's been good. I'm glad to hear that. It's been good. How long were you here for? Uh, almost a week. Okay. It was good. We, we had fun. Sweet. We, we did all the tourist stuff, and then we walked a lot. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we participated in the riots. It was good. <laughs> People yeah, yeah. were so worried about that happening here. Did you see any? Yeah. So what I learned leading up to my trip to Europe mm -hmm. is that the internet is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like there is, you can't Google anything anymore because people are like, don't go to Paris. You're going to get pickpocketed. Don't go to Rome. You're going to get pickpocketed. And I was carrying all my stuff. Like, and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm from like <laughs> New York, the biggest city in the world or one of, and I'm not worried about getting pickpocketed there. So, right. Um, but yeah, doing tourist stuff is crazy. It's so many lines and yeah, yeah. It, was, it was fun. Glad to hear that. It was, it was good. Try any new foods that you really enjoyed? Uh, no. Oh. I mean, not nothing new. Oh, okay. I had like some Italian food. Okay. Uh, French food. You also some went Asian to Asian food in France. Yeah, you went to Italy, right? Like Sicily yeah. and stuff. Okay. Not because of the White Lotus. <laughs> have you seen the White Lotus? I have. The one with, oh my god, what's her name? She's hilarious. The um, the rich heiress lady. Dina Bianca? Oh. <laughs> um, uh, Tanya. Tanya McQuad. Yes, yeah, yes, she's was, hilarious. Yeah. I'm not going to spoil anything for the audience at home. So. Mm -hmm. It's very funny. I feel like my position got so passive for no reason at all. Oh, I don't remember how pieces move. When's the last time you played over the board? Blitz or chess in general? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta calculate. No, I don't. I'm just gonna move here. That's a very safe move. No, it's not. It's very aggressive. <laughs> Yeah, but in terms of like calculation, you didn't need to calculate. Oh it. yeah, yeah, yeah like, like you, yeah, exactly, right. Maybe that's the next move. I mean, with the way you're playing, it's gearing up to be to look that way. 
I'm gonna go here. Mm. Mm. I wanted to find. Okay, now you're finally calculating. No, I'm just sacrificing. I'm not calculating anything. Let's go for it. All right. Um. I hope I get a brilliant move for that. <laughs> oh, you're, so, thre you're threatening my pawn. Yeah. Someone run it through chess.com yeah, analysis. I hope, I, yeah, I hope, I hope someone has it open. <laughs> yeah. Do I just go for it? You can do whatever you want. Fine. I'm going for it. <laughs> This game is either going to be brilliant or dog like it's just going to every move is a mistake. Yeah, every I can't tell. Bad. So far it's looking good though. Yeah, I'm waving at my fans. <laughs> <laughs> You're a one fan? Yes, I have one fan. Yeah. Having one fan is the most important part in life though. That's it. That's all you just need. Just one? Just one. Tell that to the streamers who have one viewer. <laughs> that sounds too harsh. I mean, I'm, that's so hard. You think they would? You think they want more viewers or less viewers? I, I think they would want more viewers, but I was a, I was referring to Lucy. Lucy is yeah. well, your one true fan, and that's what matters. The most important fan. Yes. Okay, so if I go here, what happens? Maybe nothing. <laughs> like to you, I don't know. Okay. Maybe I have something. I'm about to find out. Maybe I don't. Nemo, Nemo, what am I famous for? Um. Besides the channel and the good looks, what am I famous for? The Vienna. What am I famous for? The run! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I'm getting the rucked. I don't know if this works, but. Uh, but you did it. You had to do I, it, yeah, right? You had to, to do, do it. it. I really hope it works. Cause then it will be then it will be good content. And if it doesn't work, I can be like the rook is an absolute bull. No, no, then I'm gonna lose to you, which is worse. That's, so, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the worst thing I can listen, happen. Huh? Listen, listen, okay. I got I got beef with ev with everybody. So all I right, gotta... got it. Oh, 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 no, 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 no! I'm that's there to stay. <laughs> there to stay. Yes. Oh wait, that doesn't work. Not only does that not work. No, that works. that's checkmate. <laughs> no! All right, good game. I'm back home in New York. I'm no longer in Paris. And I'm going to analyze the game where I sacrificed my rook IRL. Uh, and uh, actually, the person that yelled the rook in the background when I asked, when am I famous for, uh, was my wife. That was a very amazing moment um, where Nemo had no idea what the heck I was talking about. And then, um, and then Lucy yelled. It was quite hype. Park got hype. Um, it was nice. So, Nemo began the game with e4. And in the beginning of the video, I actually told her I know what her first move is going to be because she doesn't play any other openings. Like, she just refuses to move any other pawn on the first move. I like my Karl Khan, but I'll play a French, I'll play a Scandinavia, and I'll play some e5 stuff. I'll play the modern. I really don't mind. Um, but in serious games, and this is, you know, very serious game in the park in Paris, uh, this is the opening that I know best. Uh, and um, my rating is 3,500, my ELO, because I'm very proud of myself. Um, and she played E5, which is the advanced variation. I played C5, and my knowledge ended pretty early because she gave me this check, which is, which is not a good move, but it's not like a losing mistake. It's just not a move that challenges the black position. Like E6, white's most challenging moves are bishop E3, for example, defending the pawn. Uh, and then I might play something like knight d7, and then she can play here, which pins me, so it's a different story. Uh, but again, like, life goes on. You know, you, you, you play chess. Um, now, what, uh, what she did is she gave me a check straight away, and white does not want to go here if black can commit the bishop. That's just generally my experience. Like, this just kind of helps black. Is it any, like... Is it a fatal error? Not really. So I just played bishop d7. Could I have played knight c6? Probably. Then she would have went here maybe and defended, and then we would have had a game. Uh, could I have gone here? Yeah, but I was like, I'll just go here. 
Now, in this position, I jokingly said that I was going to recapture with the king. Uh, for obvious reasons, this is a very bad move. You put your king directly in the line of fire. You now cannot, can no longer castle. However, in terms of taking back with queen and knight, it's actually... It's about the same. Um, actually, in, I would argue the knight is better because you actually get a piece out that targets the center. If you take with the queen... You only have an attack on this, and after this, you have to continue to attack this somehow. You could go here or here, but then at some point, you're going to have to figure something out. Because if you keep killing time and you don't do this the right way, suddenly it's not so simple. Like, suddenly, you do, white's going to hang on to everything, and that's not really what you want uh, in this type of structure. So, when she took on d7, my knowledge of the position kind of already was gone. But I was like, all right, knight takes d7, we'll figure it out. Um, and for white, it's important to preserve this pawn. Because if you preserve this pawn, like let's just say b4, which by the way is just not even a good move because I can play a5, me taking here is very good for me. Uh, because I will, get, I will get to these pawns. I will play b6, a5, I will undermine them. If you lose a center pawn like this, it's not good. The knight will keep going forward, you'll never have any peace, and then I'll develop and I'll march forward. So, just for your understanding, it's better for white to develop naturally and hang on to the center pawn, and now I can take on c5 with either my knight or my bishop. I Here I followed the age-old uh, chess advice of don't move the same piece multiple times in the opening. Can I go here? Yes. But as you see from the evaluation, it's not the best move because I've already developed my knight. So by taking on c5, it's not like I'm gonna go here, but I'm just getting a step closer to castling. Like, I already moved the knight. It, it moved. It's good. It's got eyes on this. It's doing a good job. It's not on its traditional active square, but it can always, you know, expand out. Maybe I'll draw arrows correctly. And also controlling f6 is important because maybe I'll go here. So she castled, which is a natural move, and I played knight e7. And already, like, again, when you're playing chess in the park, the board looks a little bit different. It just does. You might not understand that because you've never played chess in the park. That's completely fine. Or you never played chess IRL. Uh, some of you mostly just you know just play online. It's different. You're like a little bit. You're a little bit like uneasy, right? There's a lot of people around. Maybe there's not where you're gonna be because uh, you're not gonna get stared at like a zoo animal like I do when I play chess in parks. But that's completely fine. Um, but the board is just different. And so at this point during the game, I was thinking like, did I play the opening correctly? Because I've never had a position like this. Uh, she gave me this check, and I thought, all right, well, I, I mean, it, it seems like I'm doing things correctly. I've got my knights here, and she played c3. c3 is a, a reasonable move, but I, but I think she should focus on development. I, I don't actually understand the idea of c3. It's better than putting a knight on c3, because, as you can see from the eval, it actually goes down quite a bit. The knight doesn't really have a role in the game. Like, I'll go a6, and the knight just can't participate. At some point in the future, the best move is going to be moving the knight somewhere else. Like... That's why, okay, she played c3, I thought she was trying to fight for this, but I thought it made more sense for her to develop the bishop, and then the knight, you know, that way, so she could go out that way. But she went here, I can't control my opponent's moves, only my own, and now I castled. Uh, could I play knight to g6, targeting the weak pawn? Yes, but I'm a man of principle. I haven't actually castled yet, so I'm gonna go here, and I thought, well, certainly she played c3 in order to play the move b4. Uh, but again, she's not developing her pieces, plus we're like, bantering a little bit, so, you know, she plays queen e2. Not a mistake, right? Eval is still minus 0.2. White can do many, many things in this position. She slid her queen out to apply more defense to this pawn. Uh, take anything if necessary. Attack here. Maybe go out this way if it's possible. And now it's kind of like, uh, it's a question of how does, how does black play on from here? And in any given chess position, you want to think about checks, captures, attacks. I'm always scanning these moves, but none of them are working. Um, and I thought, this is a target. This is where the game should be played because I'm not going to go here. So I'm looking at potentially a pawn break in the future to open things up. Uh, and I was thinking she wants this. So I played queen c7 for multiple reasons. Number one, eyes on this. Number two, get out of any pins. Number three, connect my rooks. Makes sense. She goes knight bd2. So I've talked about this move already. She wants to probably move her knight out and then move her bishop. And at this point, I was like, I think this is a good moment as ever. I'm going to play knight to g6. So I am just straight up threatening to take the pawn on e5. Now, she has multiple ways of defending that pawn. Uh, 
she has rook e1, which physically defends it, and then she has uh, a tactical way of defending the pawn by playing the move knight to b3. The knight hits the bishop, so my two pieces both see the bishop and there, which means they're overloaded. So now if I take, we go down this line, one piece stops looking at the bishop, two pieces stop looking at the bishop, and I lose. That's bad. I don't want to do that, right? So knight bd2, knight g6. She could play knight to b3, at which point I would have to acknowledge the threat. Um, but she plays rook e1, which is a reasonable move, defending the pawn. And at this point, I'm starting to think, okay, I think the configuration of her position is a little bit lazy, like just kind of lackadaisical. And I've got... I'm not calling her lazy. I don't know her character, but uh, I just thought this is kind of like easy moves. I think there's something here. And as always, checks, captures, attacks. But if you can't get a check, capture, or attack successfully, you think of a way to improve your position, okay? And you think of uh, improving a piece or pawns or both. And sometimes a pawn trade in a position exists. So I'm always looking at this move f6. If takes, this opens up, but that opens up. And I can play a move like rook f6, and suddenly, I've got some very meaningful pressure. And with just one pawn trade, both of my rooks participate in the game now, which is a big deal. So, first, I played knight f4. The reason I played this move is I thought, I'm attacking her queen. She can only go back that way. She could go here, but then I just do this, and... She either does the same thing or completely leaves the game because now I can just walk right into the position. So I was thinking I'm going to play knight f4 and beginners play moves like knight f4 because they're like, oh, I'm attacking the queen. It's a good move. I played knight f4 because the, qu the queen cannot actually touch any of the center. So all of those squares are covered and the queen has to go backwards. And got to be careful because I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come into d3 too. So... By playing knight f4, I force the queen back to f1, which is very ugly. And now I play f6. And now I'm taking over the initiative. In fact, I've probably had the initiative for a couple of moves now. This move attacks the pawn. This move attacks the queen. This move threatens to open up the position in a very, very beneficial way for me. Um, if she takes, I'm going to take with the rook. Then I'm going to double. She could try to kick my knight out. But it's going to get very, very dicey very quickly for white. Uh, because I've got a lot of tactics. Um, first of all, I can just leave and, you know, that's a soft spot in White's position. So again, f6, very instructive move. Now here, all hell breaks loose. She plays g3. And in this position, I had calculated something very interesting, and I'm going to share it with you now because I want to show you what goes through my head. The move g3 attacks my knight. There's multiple ways to get rid of a threat. As you saw, you can acknowledge it. You can create one of equal or exceeding danger, danger levels. I thought of this. And this was a ridiculous move. If queen takes, I'm a genius, right? But what about king takes? And I rejected this because I thought I have a check, which is mate almost. She blocks and I have nothing. Turns out, after a move like this or this, this is very scary for white. And after this, there's knight g4 check and I win the rook. So I actually could have played my original crazy idea, which was bishop takes f2. And I, and I had seen this, but I, I, didn't, I didn't see it cleanly. And that's why I didn't play it, because I just thought it didn't work. But I was wrong. Could have played bishop takes f2. Instead, I sacrificed my knight. I played pawn takes e5, and I thought, I'm getting a pawn. When she takes my knight, I'm going to get a second pawn. So I'm only down one point. But I've also got this an open king to work with, and a monster pawn cluster. And as you're going to notice in this game, it's very difficult for pieces to deal with pawn clusters, especially if the pawns defend each other. When they defend each other, they create these menacing thorns, and they're going to just remove you from the defense. And I'm, again, I'm still barreling down toward that area. And when e4 happens, my queen gets an open gate, and then my knight gets access. So my position has amazing coordination here. She played queen h3. And at this point, this is an attack on my pawn with a check. Of course, I should play a move like this. But I really didn't want to lose time. I thought that if I allowed my opponent too much time, suddenly there's tactics, and I'm not even sure I'm better anymore. So it was a very tense moment in this game, and I was like, do I acknowledge her threat 
like this or like this. Like, do, do I acknowledge the threat on my pawn or do I just go for it? And I thought, if I go for it and I lose, I'm going to look stupid. But if I go for it and I win, I'm going to look like a genius. And so in this position, I played e4. Now, as you can see from the computer, the computer is not impressed because it's actually not about this. The computer f thinks this first is better, hitting my rook, forcing me to go here, and then all of this. And then you don't take the pawn, but instead this. And suddenly white is swarming and I'm in serious trouble. So I have to play knight f6, she can give me a check. And uh, I could play king f8 maybe, but this is a very scary position. She can already sacrifice her bishop to try to checkmate me. Um, yeah, e4 was a, was a very poorly thought out decision. I, I, it, 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 was, it was not intelligent of me to play e4, but I went for it. And she went queen e6, and I went king h8, and now I, I am threatening the knight. I have pressure on f2, all of this good stuff. Knight takes e4 is still looking like a very, very nice move, but she goes here. And at this moment, I was like, <gasps> checks, captures, attacks. I don't have a check. That's the only check I have. It loses a rook. I can take this and I can take this. And you always need to look at pieces near the opponent's king that are only protected by the king. I could go here. Could I double up and go here? Yes. But I'm a deviant chess mind. I'm always looking for the things I shouldn't do. And I was like, wait a minute. I'm going to go here. She has no checks on me. She's going to get my rook. And I'm going to get in against the king. And I realized that the king has to snuggle in the center with nowhere to go. And I thought, best case scenario, I win. Worst case scenario, I might have a perpetual check. So I sacrificed the rook! Rook takes f2. And this move was the proud moment of the game. This was a nice one. Um, she got the rooked IRL. Now what's crazy is she doesn't have to take. The engine gives knight f1, defending mate and opening the bishop. And I just have to go here and, I don't know, accept the fact that I, I'm not getting a rook sack this then there's this with the intention of getting queen g3 and white can actually hang on here by just taking and ignoring my rook just getting a position like this up a piece but under a big attack and apparently it's equal and like with best play something like this i can force a draw and if this i can take this and it's like total chaos um but she took my rook she did take my rook and did go here. And I thought, best case scenario, I win the game. Worst case scenario, I draw, right? I'm going to have a perpetual check. I was already thinking queen g3 and stuff, but I have to be very careful because if I do this the wrong way, her king escapes. If her king escapes, she's up five points of material. She's up a rook. I have uh, four extra pawns, three extra pawns. Three extra pawns, and she's a, a rook and a piece. So I'm down a lot of material here. I play rook to f8, and again, I'm down by five points of material, but it's equal because even though I have mate threats, she has rook f1 here. And I just assumed that after something like this, I was going to deliver a mate, but white, aka stockfish, sacrifices the knight. And after take back, rook f6, I cannot take... Well, no, I can take. It's not back rank mate. But then this. And this is no longer mate. The king escapes. Like this. So, sorry I didn't see that in the game. My bad. But I thought this was a pretty good position and a very difficult one to play with low time. And yeah, I mean, she had to find rook f1. Which is not a super hard move to find, but obviously this all looks very, very dangerous. And, and the king, it looks like you're getting mated at any given moment. Um, like for instance, queen h6, king e2, queen h5, the king just goes to e1 and then runs out. So instead of all, of all that, she went here. Which is stopping queen f2 mate, but unfortunately enables this, which is just checkmate in one move. Um, so she helped me out actually because the position here, according to Stockfish, is equal. 
Um, I helped her out a little bit because I sacrificed my knight for no good reason. And then a couple of moves later, I sacrificed all of my king safety and my rook. But I was going for the highlight reel. And sometimes to go for the highlight reel, you gotta put yourself in the line of fire. And uh, it worked. Maybe next time it won't, but in this game it definitely did. And it was a very instructive uh, kind of attacking lesson with how to attack with five different pieces, I felt like, in this game. Rook takes F2, the soft spot near the king, and we get the job done in this game. Shaky, but we got the job done. Um, I had a lot of fun. Thanks for watching uh, until this moment in the video, if you did. Hope you enjoyed the analysis and the banter and the IRL footage. I, um, I do go outside. In fact, I will probably go outside after I finish recording this video. Uh, and so should you. Get out of here.